Hey, this is Ken from Maker's Box. We're going to uh, show you how to assemble the Icon Solder Kit. Alright, let's see what we've got ourselves in here. A circuit board, we've got a battery holder, a resistor, a light, or a switch, and an LED. And then I usually don't ship with the kit's batteries because the uh, U.S. Postal System thinks they're going to catch on fire, but they're handy to have. And if you've got little helpers with you, you can always have them test your LED out beforehand. So these are color-changing RGB LEDs, and you can see the battery will help you figure out which the long lead is the, the positive lead. But we'll get to that. All right, so. Uh, I kind of tried to make the circuit board to be self-explanatory as possible. I'll kind of teach you a little bit about the circuit, how you get battery, switch, LED, resistor. I always like to start off with the resistors. They don't have any polarity, so they can go in either way. Um, the color markings tell you what the value is, and uh, you can just put about any value in here. These are hundreds, I think, or 330s will work. Just something to keep your battery from running out too quickly and pull these in close to the board as you can. I need to bend the leads out a little bit to hold them in place and I always like to start with resistor. I mean they can go in either way. They're also fairly heat tolerant so your iron's heating up and the first one's always the hardest joint. So when I'm soldering through hole components you want to uh, get your heat onto the pad as well as the lead of the component. So you get the heat flow into both of them. And then you have about two seconds. I'm going to introduce a little bit of solder and you'll see it melt in and wick in. And it's going to be really hard to see on this video. Um, uh, there's other videos that show close up soldering much better than this. This is more about how to assemble the kit. But hopefully, you get a little bit of. Visibility. I tell people, you know, as you see it soak in and um, it'll tent in, you'll see it's just kind of magic. This one here doesn't have quite enough solder on it, but we'll fix that later. You will be able to see, and this one's got a little bit too much solder, so a little bit of both cases. And then we're going to use our uh, flush cut pliers to trim those off as close as we can to the board. And you can see I didn't quite get that resistor perfect, but nothing's perfect, so we'll live with it. Uh, next component, let's put in our switch. So this is a single pole dual throw, but we're only actually using it as a... I'm sorry, single single pole dual throw. Single? I can never get those right. But anyway, we're actually just using half of that circuit to uh, connect the battery. Flip that over on its end. And just like the resistor, we're going to touch both the pad and the pin. I'll give it a couple seconds. And on a, a multi lead component, being more than one lead, I always like to double check and make sure um, the switch doesn't have any polarity, so it can go in either way, but it is mounted flush. So before you solder more than one lead in, you want to make sure you. Got your ducks in a row because it gets exponentially harder to unsolder once you solder more than one of those leads in. Alright, got those three in. Uh, a little bit too much solder, but again, I was kind of cringe on when people comment about how it's not IPC standard or NASA standard, and we are just hobbyists and we're learning. And we want to try and do our best, and we will get better as we go. So I'll read those up to make them a little more pretty, which is another thing they'll tell you is a no-no. But okay, so we got switch resistor. So now we're all warmed up, and we know what we're doing. We're going to go for this LED, and again, so this guy's a little bit more tricky. He's a little more heat sensitive. Um, he also has a polarity. If you put him in the wrong way, he's not going to work. So we want to pay attention to polarity. And you can see one leg's longer than the other, and a little bit less hard to see as there's a flat end on these. So I should go by the length of the LED. And of course, our battery's got a plus on it, so you can always verify if you're unsure. And then on your silk screen, 
you will see a uh, plus. Um, it's usually a little confusing to beginners. A square pad is pad one, but on an LED, that's the cathode, so that's the negative side. And then on some of my kits, I'll actually put a little uh, indication on which is the longer of the legs to try and make it easier. So long leg goes in positive. Long leg goes in positive. And then on this, you can mount it like that. It'll stick out, or you can bend it over. I think I kind of like having it bent over because then it kind of illuminates the, the board. So I got it bent flat like that. And... Let's nail it in place. So again, multi-lead components, so I'm going to solder one lead in, and then double check that it's in the way I want it, which it is, and then we can double check that the uh, long leg is going to the positive hole. So again, these are it's almost easier to start over if you uh, put them in backwards, but to unsolder them and then them back in and um, again the LEDs don't stand up too well to a whole lot of heat so if you if you're on them for a while you might wait a minute and let them cool off the hair sometimes you can overheat them and they don't work okay so those are clipped off clean and that just leaves so that's the front end of the board and now we just got our battery holder on here so the battery holder has a divot on the side the battery slides in and out of got some metal tabs that will prevent that so we want those the opening towards the bottom because we're going to have either a, a something to hang a necklace on or a pin and yeah that reminds me we don't have our pen here so we're going to have to get one of those okay so let's see so um he's going to go in lead sticking up now we're going to flip them on his back. And okay, so uh, these battery holders are a little tougher to solder because they are big radiators that suck the heat right out. So you got to be a little more patient with them. Also, you got to be careful not to burn yourself because the back gets hot. So I'm trying to hold it uh, flat and level. Again, multi-lead components, so I'm going to flip it over and make sure it's sitting uh, flat and level the way I like it, and it is. Well, yeah, not perfect, but pretty close. And so let's do the rest of these and get this guy nailed in place. Okay. Cool down just a second. Okay, it's time to test it out. So the switch, uh, I don't think I marked on here what was on, what was off, but up is going to be on. So switch it down. Uh, battery has a marking on it, positive. That always goes up towards the carrier and sure enough it works if we can get our bright lights off of it and you'll see it cycles through the there's nothing on the circuit that causes the color change it's actually inside the LED that does that and it's kind of nice this adds a little bit of variety you could put any color LED in there that you wanted uh, but I like the color changing all right and then last but not least is if you want to wear this as a badge or a pin we're going to add a Titec clutch here. Um, these aren't the... Uh, I'm having trouble finding ones I like. These are the 8 millimeter long. Um, they work, but they're not the best. They all come with a little... i get stuff on the background so focus on it. They come with a little tang on them, which we clip off like that. It's kind of hard for me to do because I'm watching the camera screen and not the... All right, and so again, I mentioned you can put a jump ring through there and hang it on a little necklace, or we're going to actually solder this clutch pin on here. 
And this is, uh, you're going to want some uh, tweezers or pliers to hold this clutch pin in place because it gets hot really quick. I'm going to keep that kind of molten. I'm going to kind of slide him in there. Oh well, this would be great if I had a circuit board holder. All right, I actually think that did it. Just so it's usually, it usually takes me a little bit of finagling, but it's on there. Can't really see the solder on the inside, but oops, yeah, we did not get a good, didn't get a good. So I don't think I got the pen hot enough. All right, let's see if we can this on a little better surface. Uh, I'm not a big fan of circuit board holders, but sometimes they come in handy. Alright, so we're going to go after this guy again. I just don't think I got the tack hot enough to hold the solder. This could be the hardest part of the hole. See, if I had a good long one, then we could run it through the other end and just saw it to it, but... Alright, we got that one. It's still pretty warm, too. Alright, that way you can attach it to your jacket, or your vest, or your shirt. And that is the I Can Solder Kit. I hope you find that easy and successful and um, if you have any questions or comments you can uh, put them in the video or email me uh... thanks for watching this is ken from makers box